Ever since I was a wee lad, I always wanted to pull things apart and construct them and put them back together. And so I'd always play with Legos. And as I got older, I'd prefer to tear apart electronics like old cell phones or cameras. In 2019, I got my driver's license and that got me thinking about all the different things you could do to take apart and work on a car. But unfortunately, at the time, I was uh, driving my parents' Audi A3 and they wouldn't let me take that thing apart, although the engine did blow up. I would just peruse Facebook Marketplace with no intentions of buying anything, but I'd look. And as listings would come and go, I started to get a little bit disinterested and I thought that a project card might not be right for me. And then there was this one that really caught my eye. Not only was it old, which is great, it was European and it had 37 thousand original miles and I'm, I'm I vetted them I have the receipts and the service records to back that up this is the lowest mileage mark II golf that I have ever seen and it's mine why hello there welcome to my 1991 Volkswagen golf meet Yankel I gave this car that beloved name because anytime I run into a problem or I get stuck, I realize the solution to my problem is probably to just give it a yank. And no, not like that, but like something's usually stuck and you just gotta pull on it harder. Now, the process of buying this car wasn't exactly perfect. In fact, I had to send a friend of mine out to go see it since I was busy. He came back with a glowing report. Thanks, Alex Marwaha. His address is there were a few things he seemed to miss. For example, the engine bay had some weird noises coming from it, like this one. And this. Now that was just the brunt of it, because if you'd look under the car, you'd notice, well, it kind of looks like Swiss cheese. I just wanted to do a respray on this car, but it really did need that new floor pan. All right, so we patched up all the holes, we gave the engine a tune-up, we're good, right? Well, the brake lines had rusted through, as well as a million other little things that I'm not gonna bore you with. Now, after buying this car, I was able to work on it in my parents' house, but after just a few months, they decided to sell that house during COVID, and I was kind of SOL. I didn't really know what to do, but my at-the-time boss was super generous and let me store the car in her driveway for just about a month. Anyone who has a car they don't know what to do with knows that a month goes by fast, and so I was right back to square one. Fortunately, I found a very dedicated Mark II golf enthusiast. In fact, he tells me he's at over 15 Mark IIs, and he also happens to be a mechanic based in Vermont, which is only a few hour drive from my house. So while I was in between moving, I decided to bring the golf there and let him tinker on it a little bit, like add an exhaust, etc. And in that time, I would figure out where I wanted to move. I ultimately decided to move to Madison, Wisconsin. The reason being is probably a video for another time. The point being, I would swing by up on Vermont on my drive over to Wisconsin, pick up the golf, trailer it all the way to Wisconsin. And let me tell you, on that 15 hour drive, I was itching to drive that golf around town. I've been waiting well over a year and a half at this point to finally drive this car. It was horrifying. I've never driven a car so old, let alone so janky, and yet every single moment of it was exhilarating. All in all, dailing this car after working on it myself has been kind of freaking awesome. But to be honest with you, there is one thing that has been driving me absolutely freaking crazy. It's this. Oof. I call that the on-off throttle jerking. Is this to show the throttle thing? No, it's just a... <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ. <laughs> My head really hurts. All right, so obviously we gotta get that fixed, but the question is how? Well, I have spent months researching this topic and have changed a slew of parts, and yet it still persists. All right, so what do I do? 
Well, after seeing a video I posted on Reddit, a Volkswagen engineer told me that it could absolutely be the clutch. The reason being there are springs in the clutch plate that prevent a sudden surge of torque being applied to and from the wheels from the engine. Now the symptoms of the bad springs are exactly what we're seeing here, a clunking and a sudden surge of torque when you're on and off the throttle. Welcome to the underneath of my car. So we've got rust on these straps. This floor pan is brand new, courtesy of Alex Marwaha. His address is, on most cars, you shouldn't be able to, uh, new fuel filter, did that myself. Here's where I think our culprit is, basically our last option to solve the jerking is gonna be the clutch. Now the reason why most people consider a clutch job to be a lot of work is not because replacing the clutch is hard, but because you have to remove the transmission to get to it. And in order to remove the transmission, you have to take off the transmission mount, the clutch cable, all the shift linkage, the CV axles, and a bunch of other little things. Way of doing it. Yeah, one bolt is still slightly in. Now working on cars is essentially a game of just moving things out of the way. The reason I say that is because in this case, I'm trying to get to the transmission. And in order to get there, we have to move the CV axles. Where's this go? And in order to move those, we have to move the control arms. I don't know what happened to this bolt, but... Now, <laughs> for whatever reason, the ball joint is majorly seized. And as you can see, I'm struggling real bad. <sighs> The good news is, is I have a special tool to separate them, but I left it at my house. I'm just gonna ignore that for now. <laughs> oh. Unsurprisingly, the starter was also mega seized. That's okay, I got big boy strength. Oh, this is David. Uh, he actually owns this shop. Shout out to Wisconsin Motorsports. They're the best, he's the best, thank you. With the starter out, it was time to support the engine since I was going to be taking off all the brackets that held it in place. Clutch cable's free. Gosh. And we'll get all the bolts that connect the transmission to the engine off and wiggle it on out. Now there's still something holding on to it. Oh, God. So I'm going to raise it up, try and take it out. David, are you ready? If that clutch isn't fucked up, when I take it out, I'm gonna be really upset. Yeah, I actually forgot about the axles that were in the way and they're biting me in the butt now. Well, I didn't feel like going home to get a special tool, so I wanted to see if Dave could figure it out. Jesus Christ. Should I just go get that tool? Yeah. <laughs> Even though he said it ablaze, it still wouldn't come off, so I wouldn't got the tool. And if I, if this works, David owes me a new tie rod. Yeah, what, 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 what do I get when it doesn't work? <laughs> Like, I feel like this is like a lose-lose. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna look away for this. I'm gonna look dead at it, because I want to see. Uh-oh. I'm not liking that at all. Oh, God. <laughs> That's bending a lot. Oh! Oh! Uh. Oh, like that. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. You know, if I can get it, maybe yeah. just a move over. Now at this point, David was giving me a million reasons as to why this wasn't gonna work, but I had an inkling that if I just hunk a dunk it really hard, it'd come out. Lower it, or you can still use it like that, but then trying to get underneath there and... Let me uh, go around this way. All right, and I think we gotta rotate it just a little bit more because now we gotta get it past. Which way, counterclockwise or clockwise? Oh, there it goes. Uh, fucking piece of shit, ah, the springs look fine. Ah! Ready? Yeah. I got it. Got it? Yeah. I'm not seeing any play. Well, that's certainly not what I was hoping to see. But let's just forget about that for now. What brand is this? I don't know. I mean, it's. Three, two, one. Here's the clutch. 
and as I feared, it really did look fine. I was hoping to see grooves or chunks out of the material, but to be honest with you, it looks brand new. Ugh. Oh, God. One. With all the clutch bits off, I'm going to go ahead and replace the rear main seal. This is the gasket that prevents all the engine oil just flooding into the transmission. Besides, it's currently gushing oil and needs to be replaced. Imagine doing all this work just to replace a seal. Usually once it gets to afternoon time, everybody wants to hang out and show <laughs> With the new clutch installed, it's time to put the transmission back on. Installation is the reverse of removal. On their own. No, this ain't happening. Hey, David. Yo. So let me get. There, is the... there we go. All right. Yeah, that's on. Well done. Thanks, man. Cool. <laughs> Now that the transmission's back in the car, it's time to reattach things like the clutch pedal and the shifter. Did the shifter just get mega misaligned? Oh boy. Oh, doozy. Don't touch anything! I think we're good, I think we're good. I think we're good, I think we're good. Get out from under the car, otherwise you'll get crushed. You'll... The fact that I can't even do this right and it's the very first step I took is not a good sign for whether or not we're gonna be driving this car today. In fact, with every step I take, I'm beginning to think driving the car will be a tomorrow thing. I think it's warm so quickly. Things were going pretty well until I reattached the clutch cable and even with it all the way extended, there was still too much play. Kind of a classic sign that something was done wrong. That is simply bizarre. Well, I'm gonna push down on the clutch pedal and see how it feels. Yeah, no, that's not right at all. <laughs> Something's wrong. The question is, can I fix it today? I have no idea. Definitely can't drive it like that right now. God, if I have to take this transmission off again, I'm gonna lose it. What can it be? As it turns out, wallowing in your own confusion doesn't help you understand the problem any better. So I went home and reviewed all the footage that we recorded up to this point to see if I could spot any mistakes I made. And after what seemed like ages of searching, I came up dry. Dude, I don't know. What should I do? Can you need to keep recording? No, thank you. Uh, yeah, two months later, Quank here. I regret to inform you that I am still yet to figure it out. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. See you next week.